and welcome back to another episode of Life in Prison. My name's Zach, and today we got another episode with Cody. Uh, we did one a couple months ago, so a lot has happened. Um, did almost 10 years, Fed, State, Maryland, West Virginia, fuck ton of time. Cody, been inside, they call me Codeine. You know what I mean? Nice to meet y'all, how y'all doing? Hope y'all like this. Maybe I can educate y'all on a little stuff from inside the walls. From being locked up years and years and years in the system, they start fucking with you. As I've always talked about before, COs get to fucking with you. Well, once you go to the feds, now you're more or less, the United States government has you by the balls. So unfortunately... Literally. Yeah, literally by the balls. So unfortunately he... You know, when he just got from the feds, you know, I went, picked him up from the, uh, from the work release camp up there, um, coming from, uh, USP Hazleton, and since he got out, busted his ass, been working, 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 but the fucked up part about it is, is no matter how hard you work, they only want to see you come down. They only want to really bring you down. When, when they have these counselors and shit out here that, that be trying to help you and shit, at the end of the day, they're not really here trying to help you, they're trying to fuck you. He just got done doing a whole nother shocker because they was trying to fuck him. So how, how did that whole experience go for you? Uh, well, I mean, I was locked up, so of course it wasn't the best experience that you may have, but uh, I got a 30-day shocker for the state. Well, while I was in there for the 30-day 30, 30 shocker, I had two days before I was getting ready to get released. And due to me being on federal papers, also three years supervised release for supervised release for the feds, two days prior to me getting released, I'm calling the like the intake and all that stuff. Hey, what time do my people come here and pick me up? Well, I write them on the kiosk and I get a response back talking about I'm not going nowhere that I got a federal hold on me. My state PO told me, Oh no, if you get violated, I'm gonna let you know. Okay, so I take her word on it, get everything set up. It was on the 19th, a couple of days before Christmas. First Christmas home in years, so of course my family was very happy, excited. Well, they get this uh, federal hold on me and tell me that I'm not going nowhere. So let me clarify too, because so since he, he did state time along with the Fed, so when he came home, he wasn't only on federal paper, he was also on state paper. So when they violated him, it was the state they'd violated him, and then it held him, and then when come due time, the feds were like, right there at the end, you know what I'm saying, right there, before Christmas, they are like, hold on a second, you ain't fucking going anywhere. I, it, it's just crazy, because this is the only case that, it's not only him that's happened to this shit, you know, it's a bunch of people that's getting fucked, not only state time, but also federally, you know what I'm saying? So, with you being on both sides of the fence, what would you say would be more strict, state or the feds, and freedom-wise? Federal is more lean with stuff, just for the simple fact of all the stuff going on with COVID. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to go out there. You can't go inside of the federal building right now due to COVID. So everything is basically you meet outside, talk to them, and you got to do a UA. They'll come to your house, do a UA in your own house to where you ain't got to go on another man sitting like there that. watching you or stripping you out while you do a UA. So I would say the feds is more lenient than the state, but you also gotta understand the feds if you violate. Unlike the state, how state gives you like a couple different chances, 30 day shocker, 60 day shocker, 120 day shocker before you go actually back to prison and do you remain to your time. The feds, so they give you a couple times to, if something were to happen each time, they're like, okay, well, here's a little bit more, a little bit more, and yes. step straight to the point. Yes, to where the feds, the feds don't have shockers, really. You know what I mean? If you mess up with the feds, you're going back for whatever the time is that they give you on your on your guideline sheet, on your time sheet. So, so is that based off points, too? Because with the state, it's not really like that. Um, feds is based off points, right? Yeah, feds is, off, feds is off points. And basically, just recently, my time was, I had, I think it was 8 to 12 months 
for just that violation. It was for dirty urns. That's what my violation held. Now, did, does that any, any of that time count statewide? So if you were sitting in the jail for a, a month, right, did the feds count any of that time toward any of their stuff? Or do they want you on federal land? The state time counted from the time I went in there until the time that my actual state shocker was over. None of that stuff counted towards the feds. So my fed time didn't start until after my shocker was up and I was in federal custody. So basically I, I didn't do both times while I was in there. Basically I just did state time and then I did my federal time. So none of that stuff ran together because all my sentences was ran consecutive. West Virginia, Maryland, and feds was all ran consecutive. So they don't, they're not, obviously I know state to state isn't going to run anything concurrent, but with the feds, it's, they want you on their land. So I know that with the feds that they kind of ship you around, how many places did you end up getting shipped to once you were in the federal system? Well, I left from state custody over Maryland and went to a federal holdover because like I said, like you was just mentioning, a lot of places don't hold federal inmates to where I had to go to a federal holdover, which was in down uh, down the city in Baltimore, Maryland. I went there called the Chesapeake Holding Facility. It's all like people that's waiting to get sentenced for the feds or people that's being held to go to a federal place. So I was there and then I was actually at two different compounds for the feds. Now, what was the first place they sent you from down there? From where? The Chesapeake? Yeah. Uh, the first place I went to, I went to a place called Big Sandy for a while, uh, for a couple months, basically just... Something like intake or something? Not, it was like an intake, but kind of like a holdover. Okay. And then I left from there and went to Hazleton, USP, and that's where I did the remainder of my time at. Now, from going from Big Sandy, where, what type of facility was that? Were you locked in your cell 23 and 1, or was it like an open dorm? How was that whole setting there? Uh... Well, none of the USPs are open dorms, they're all cells. Uh, and no, we wasn't locked down 23 and 1. We was basically out running around like normal. It was it was a unit, just like every compound, you know what I mean? Just, it wasn't as open as everywhere else because when I went there, it was, they just came off lockdown actually for a race riot. So they was literally just coming off lockdown, so everything was, real tight right then and there like the COs and the staff was more on guard more yes, looking because at they shit. were just on lockdown so they didn't know if retaliation was going to jump off or what so I got there it was a pretty shitty situation so after going from Big Sandy then on up to USP Hazleton what was the the change from that compound then on to the next because you know from our last video we talked about when Whitey Bulger got smoked while you was up there, uh, back in, back in segregation more or less. Entirely, what, what was the yard like? Was it really political? Shit, when I, when I first got there, it was wide open, you know what I mean? A lot of places, when you do time, you want to go to USP because the COs and staff or they're not as strict about other stuff to where the lower lower security places would be. When I first got there, it was wide open. You know what I mean? Wine, drugs, everything you could think of. It was wide open. You know what I mean? Go out there and play softball and drinking white lightning in my squeeze cup. Yeah, I had fun. I liked it. I, that's what but, I always say. It's fun. Yes, it was very political. You know what I mean? You're going to have your politics and everywhere because the politics is what keeps everything in order. You know what I mean? Like, if you didn't have politics, everybody be running around there Fuck ready to chop each other's heads off. So, you gotta have politics. You have to have a So, word, yes, yeah. it was very political, but for the yard wise, it was a good yard. Like, it was wide open. You know I mean? You could actually go there and bid and do your time. You know what I mean? If you like doing your time that type of way. If you wanna do programs and all that stuff, that ain't the yard for you at that point. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the compound No, that, that for wasn't you. the place for you, you know what I mean? That, that was the place where you want to go there and like, it's like, like me, if I, if I do my time, I want to do my time the way I do my time, you know what I mean? Like Having fun. It's bad enough I got to sit in here for years, so if I got to sit in here for years and do my time, 
damn right I want to do it the way I want to do it. Do it. <laughs> so that's what that's what we did. It was a good yard. I mean, had fun. It was, you know I mean, as long as you was a man and Held you wasn't around. in a cow or shit and your paperwork was right and you did what you had to do, you was good. Now from going from West Virginia prison system to Maryland and then to the feds, now I know price of drugs has skyrocketed from, you know, it was $50 for a Suboxone. Now, since you were just locked up, what's the price of a Suboxone going for in jail right now? Shit, in jail or in prison? Jail, then prison. Shit. <laughs> jail, them damn things going for about 700 to to $1,000 for one strip. Back on the felony pod? Yeah, everybody's talking about eye jammies. Now, there ain't no pieces. It's called an eye jammy. <laughs> you do an eye jammy now. You know what I mean? I jammy fifty dollars, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean hopefully that I jammy gets you right, cause after that fifty dollars, you both hope you got another fifty dollars, you wanna get another I jammy. I played poker, I shot dice, I drank, and I messed around from time to time. You know what I mean? I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? But I'm one of the ones that will say it like like I said, I did my time the way I wanna do my time. And it's always easy time when you do time. Man, that time goes by fast as shit whenever you got an eye, Jamie, man. <laughs> little drinking, strippy strip the strip drinking, my drippy drip drip. <laughs> the drinking, man, every time I drink, especially if it was that white lightning, time can get kind of different whenever you're drinking. You know what I mean? You got a bunch of hot headed men and a little old fish tank in there drinking. Shit's oh, going up shit. happening, you know what I mean? Might have a wrestling match or, you know what I mean? <laughs> Boxing match. Whatever it may be, time. but. You're killing time, you're beating the, beating the system out of the time, you know what I mean? Don't let the system beat you. So, from from jail, then in the feds, what was the prices for thing in the feds? Like the box and, and then coke and dope and... Did they have K2 up there? K2, did they? Oh, damn, they had more K2 than goddamn the stores had. <laughs> what are you talking about? What was the prices like in there? Like I said, whenever I first got there, the yard was wide open, so... When I say that, wide open as in everything, even the drugs. The drugs was cheap there, you know what I mean? You could get it. When I first got there, uh, this is in a USP remind, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, one of the highest security facilities, and it was a level 7 yard. You know what I mean? So that's that's the next step besides the smooth program and ADX, of course. But when I first got there, there was you could buy a strip for $50. You know what I mean? So the prices was... No, about good there, you know? Absolutely. It was good there. You could buy fifty dollars and bust it down in pieces and make your money back and some. So it was good. Let you know I me mean? make you some commissary, stamps, whatever it may be that you needed or wanted. Uh K two K two I've never seen it run out of K two since I've been there. Like it got to the point to where people was literally getting a book, like a reading book, like a novel with 410 pages in there they would literally get the whole book sprayed with this shit oh and you gotta figure an ID which remind you I'll even show you that. but this is my first original prison ID right there it's as you can see it's a little burnt up and stuff because I used to use it to fry with you know what I mean that'd be my my spatula so it's a little burnt up but that's what you call a, a federal ID inside the joint and also when I was talking about an ID of K2 this is what they sold an ID of K2 that's an ID right there they literally take the pieces of paper for the K2 market and cut it out and sell that that's how they sold it IDs when I first got there you could buy an ID about two hundred to five hundred dollars depends on how good it was and this is the piece if of it paper, was that gas a piece of paper for two hundred bucks you know what I mean but you gotta figure out this little ID right here. If it's that gas, you know what I mean? That stuff that's put people down, which that's what they wanted. You could probably get you probably about a good 500 pieces out of this. So that's not bad. At the same time, Make there's a hustle in there. You know what I mean? It, it, it might be expensive to buy, but if you're gonna break it down on a breakdown tip, there's more money in it than. Out here selling drugs out on the street. Plus, it smokes like weed. You know, you you get high for hours on end. Hours. You know, sometimes it's a little bit more fire. And they was than doing hours this shit. People out. Man, when I was there, it got to the point. Like I said, I've seen so much different stuff since I've been incarcerated. It's the way. It's crazy how people 
come up with stuff. It's like MacGyver in there, you know what I mean? Like, so we got time to think about how to get stuff in, a better way to when get When I was there, in. everybody was taking the, the K2, and like I said, they got the little pieces, right? They take the little pieces and they take like a wire, and they would wrap it around this little piece of paper, and remind you, the piece of paper is like tiny, tiny, like a micro dot. They would take the wire and wrap it around there and put one end of the wire on like the negative part of the battery and put the other end of the wire on the positive and they would heat it up and basically the wire would of course turn red and it would burn a piece of paper and they would you know what I mean that's what that's how they was doing it putting it on the wire and just letting it man burn. these people would put this stuff on the wire man and they would go out like I've seen people swimming on concrete I don't know if y'all ever seen people swim on concrete Oh but my god. It's possible. People can really swim on concrete. Like like I said, I've done seen people sw swim on concrete, swan dive. <laughs> see people nodding out, turning white, yeah, throwing man. up, shit yeah, everywhere I, in their cell. I've seen them I've seen them swimming around puke. Like but they'll come back too and they'll want another one. Like yep. they love that shit. Like it's it's crazy. Like I wasn't really on that stuff. I ain't gonna lie. I was scared of the K2 unless it was a, a weed high. Now, if it was a weed high, get up in the morning time for doors pop, brush my teeth, drink my coffee. You know what I mean? Sit back and smoke me a little bit. If it was the weed stuff, the then I'd be ready stuff. to go. As soon as oh, the doors man. would pop, I'd be suited and booted, ready to go. Have Give me a little buzz, like start zombies. my day off. Some mm -hmm. of them dudes be looking like zombies, man. Man. Not, not aware of anything that's going Nothing. on stuck. Like, Nothing. They wouldn't be aware of nothing. They'd be out there. They definitely won't be in prison. That's for damn sure. They'd be out there in Cancun somewhere on a beach with a bunch of fine hunters. Guess they, what? Unless they know the compound, they can't test you for it. And you know how many different compounds out there of it? And that's the thing. They would literally hate that stuff. The CEOs would get so mad because everybody would be high as shit and they know it. Like, you can't even walk straight. Oh, we're taking you and doing a UA. Man, let's go do the UA, you know what I mean? Go up there and be happily cup. put your put your put your dick thing in, the in there and <laughs> piss. It come back wouldn't be nothing on there. The COs the the COs and the feds just like the feds period, you know what I mean? The respect level in the feds and the USP is crazy. Like when I say crazy, I'm not saying it in a bad term, I'm saying it in a, in a good term, like Respect is everything. And the COs carry it the same way. Like, you know what I mean? They're going to respect you as a man and not be on the bullshit because, like, they know that you're human. Shit can happen here. You know what I mean? They can come to work today and not leave out of here. You know what I mean? Because there's people in here that's got that type of time and they're at a USP and Hazleton was a level seven yard. You know what I mean? If people know what they're talking about and know about the feds and know how everything works. Like I said, a level seven is the highest you can go security wise other than going to the smooth program or going to ADX. You know what I mean? So the COs there carry themselves with respect and they treated I don't even like saying inmates, but they treated the fellow convicts with respect. For the federal for the federal system, um, what's this smooth program? What's that? I've heard of ADX. Um, we've probably all heard of ADX forums out there in Colorado, in the middle of nowhere, where like big meets is being held, right? So what's what's this smooth program thing? The smooth program is like in the feds. If you are a troublemaker or if you get into shit, they will send you to a smooth program, which it used to be Lewisburg. Lewisburg, it's basically smooth. Pro, smooth, pro, smooth program is basically you're locked down 23 and one, and you go there. And it used to be an 18 month program. You had to go there for 18 months, and when you first get there, you don't get no commissary, you don't get nothing besides hygiene, and you gotta do like little programs and stuff, little worksheets and all that stuff. And basically, you would level your way up to where you can order commissary, and then. Just basically working yourself doing a program because it, it's a disciplinary place. That's where okay. we go to, like for disciplinary and stuff. It's something with the, something that the feds got to where they would try to eliminate all the bullshit and 
try to help with the, all the chaos going on, stuff like that. But it used to be 18 months, but now they switched it and it's in, uh, I think, I want to say uh, Kansas somewhere or something like that. And it's, a, it's actually a newer place now and it's still the same thing, 23 and 1. But now it's only an 8 month program instead of 18 months. So now you can go there for 8 months. And after you're there for a certain amount of time, you can't just up and leave there and go to another yard. You know what I mean? Once you get done there, they put you on a thing called a step down program. And you got to, it's in the same facility, but you got to go there and basically you're out of your cell all day, like a normal, like you would be if you was on a normal compound again. But you're around everybody else who is going through the same stuff with you. Okay. It's like mentally, like trying to readjust you readjust, back. Readjust, yeah. Okay. Instead of you've been in a cell for by yourself or with one other person for almost a year or like it used to be a year and a half it's better being there with somebody than nobody it would be kind of difficult for anybody to just get out and go back on a unit with people you ain't been around run around noise and people moving behind you like it's it that stuff, you out. yeah stuff messing with you so they had they got the step down program and once you get done the step step down program that's when you can go to another yard and most time it's going to be like a high level security because you're just coming home you're just coming home <laughs> that just shows you i'm i'm I hate to say it but in two slides i'm just saying coming home good god don't get like this people please don't but going to a like coming from there going to another yard you gotta be at a higher security place because the CO is going to have you like that and your points are going to be higher up. You know what I mean? You might have been at an FCI prior, but now you just went there, so they're going to put your points up and they're going to basically, if your points ain't high enough, or if your points ain't high to for USP, most of the time Grand Prairie is going to put a managed variable on you and put you into a USP because that's just how they're going to work with it. So it goes FCI, USP, and then like ADX. Well, if you're going to go on levels, it goes camp, low, medium, FCI, USP. I guess you can count the smooth, but smooth is more of a, like a disciplinary place. Okay. But you throw it in the mix. You can throw it in the mix, and then ADX, of course. Right? Now, are people move from just say like usp to an adx is that say say you're in the federal system just fucking shit up are they automatically going to send you to an adx or is that for higher higher ranking people or more no adx is for anybody if you if you're there and you get into shit like you get like an in-house murder or something like that or assault on a staff or anything like that they can pick you up and move you straight to ADX if they want to. I mean, ADX is for anybody. You don't gotta be somebody special or anything like that to go to ADX. A high profile no, person. No, okay. no you don't. I mean, you can go to ADX with five years. <laughs> I mean, if you're in that motherfucker and you're being that motherfucker, <laughs> they got a place for you. you they know got what a mean? place That's what they hole. got a place for you and it ain't no wait list. <laughs> if they come there and they pick you up, they can take you right up there and put you in that damn place. ADXs are super maxes. It's an ultra max. Ultra like, max. You got, you got your cell, and then you got your cell door, of course, and then you got a sally, a sally port, and then you got another cell. You know what I mean? So where?